Welcome back to Seven's continuing coverage of Cyclone Yassi. We're now getting into the crunch time for thousands of people across towns and cities in North Queensland. Kay McGrath is in Cairns where locals there are expected to feel the full brunt of Yassi's force. Evening Kay, tell us where are you at the moment? Thanks guys. Well one of the hardest things about today has been the anticipation, the waiting for Cyclone Yassi to, to strike. And uh, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that I am feeling a little bit nervous. But we've had, uh, we've had lots of text messages, calls from family and friends who are a little bit concerned uh, about our wellbeing. So I thought I would show you our setup. Now, uh, I'm pleased to tell you that we're high and dry. We're on the Break Free Hotel, which as people who know Cairns is, uh, is on the Esplanade. We've got a bird's eye view of, uh, of Yassi. As, uh, as it comes through. And as you can see out there, it's a bit wild and woolly at the moment, but nothing, nothing compared to uh, how it's expected to be at around midnight tonight. All right, Kay, hopefully we'll be able to cross to you soon. Well, Cyclone Yassi is expected to be the biggest and most deadly cyclone to hit Australia in living memory. And the world is watching as comparisons are made with Hurricane Katrina. Katrina devastated New Orleans in August of 2005. It made landfall as a Category 5 system, whipping up wind speeds of almost 300 kilometres an hour. The official death toll sits at 1,836. The damage bill is estimated to be in excess of $80 billion. And we're joined now by weather expert Bill Reid, who tracked Katrina as it approached the coastline. Bill, thanks very much for your time this afternoon. How does Katrina compare with Cyclone Yassi? Well, of course, uh, every storm is different based on its impact, but uh, uh, viewing the satellite image and reading the reports out of the Bureau of Meteorology over there. Uh... Well, Cyclone Yassi is expected to come ashore just north of Cardwell. Reporter Aaron Edwards is there. Aaron, anyone left in town at the moment? Well, Cardwell is almost deserted. Its people were told to get out as Cyclone Yassi began pushing further south. Now, it's right on the, on the beach, but Hinchinbrook Island will offer little protection from a Category 5 battering. Cardwell is expecting the highest storm surge in north and far north Queensland, possibly seven metres high. Now, the water will rush from the beach across the Bruce Highway and into the homes and businesses on the other side and beyond. Now, this area is known by tourists who travel between Cairns and Townsville for its mud crab sandwiches and its fishing. Hinchinbrook Island Resort is just a few k's south of us. It has a marina filled with millions of dollars of yachts. Now, they are moored there tonight. It was just simply too dangerous to risk moving them further south. With 700 millimetres of rain expected in this system, it could be days before evacuated residents get back to Cardwell to inspect the damage to their homes and businesses for themselves. Erin Edwards reporting to us from Cardwell there. We'll take a break and we'll be back with this special cyclone edition of 7 News. Welcome back to our special Cyclone coverage here on 7. And our colleague and uh, co-reporter Kay McGrath is in Cairns. We spoke to her briefly at the start of our program and we go back to her now for what's developing there with her. Kay? Hello, Rod. Well, um, sadly, I can't add a great deal to, uh, to what you already know. As I mentioned before, we are pleased to report that we're high and dry. We're in the Break Free Hotel. We're on the fourth level uh, because, as you would have heard, the storm surge still expected here in Cairns, though I believe a little bit of the pressure has, has eased on that particular situation. The weather has really started to deteriorate probably in the last hour or so, and we've got a very steady... Uh, heavy rain. But uh, the wind gusts uh, have dropped away. They, they're really intermittent. As I mentioned earlier, this is, um, this is the first time I've actually been in a cyclone. Um, I reported, as you know, on Cyclone Larry. That was coming in uh, after the event. And I will admit I have a few nerves. Um, but it's going to be a, a very interesting night. It will be a challenge. And our challenge is to, to attempt to keep broadcasting to you and uh, share that experience with you. Now, whether that happens or not is another thing. But as the light fades, I think it will become scarier and, uh, and that wind speed picks up and uh, we're in for a wild ride. 
Indeed. Thanks for now, Kay. We'll hope to get back to you through the evening. Well, we now want to better understand what impact these winds of up to 285 kilometres an hour could have on homes. And joining us now is Dr Bruce Harper, who's a coastal ocean and wind engineer. Now, Bruce, you went up to Innisfail after Cyclone Larry. What lessons have we learnt from that experience and are we better prepared this time? Well, what we learnt from Larry was that uh, modern houses that uh, have been built since 1980 in particular um, stood up very well to Larry. Uh, Larry had winds uh, just under 200 kilometres per hour. And uh, we would expect the average house built under modern standards to uh, certainly sustain more than 250 kilometre per hour winds. We're talking 300 kilometre per hour winds here. What's that going to mean? Well, that's right. Uh, thankfully, we hope that uh, very, many, very few properties will actually suffer those sorts of winds. Appreciate it. Well, let's move on to Townsville now. Seven News reporter Paul Caddick is there. Paul, you've been there through the afternoon reporting. Are conditions deteriorating at the moment? They are, and rapidly, right in just the last hour or so, the rain has started to intensify and the wind has, uh, has really started to, to kick in. In Townsville, we're expecting Category 3 strength winds, not Category 5, but that's still 150, 160 kilometre an hour winds and still destructive. We've seen just in the, the street behind us, which is one of the main streets here in the Townsville CBD, already a, a bit of debris, signs flying uh, up, uh, peeled off buildings further down the street and blown up the street here. And as I say, the, the rain is also starting to fall. They're expecting between 400 to 500 millimetres of rain in this region over the next 24 hours. But the main concern in Townsville is going to be the storm surge that's expected to hit. Now, it's, it'll be huge waves whipped up by the cyclone combined with tonight's high tide. It's expected to, we're expected to see a surge that will go up to three metres higher than high tide. And that's what's seen uh, the, the raft of evacuations across Townsville in the last couple of days. Exactly. That's very good advice. We just noticed a car go through the intersection there, Paul, and there are other cars on the street. What is going on? Obviously, you said most of the people who needed to be evacuated have been evacuated, but there are still people in town. There are still people, some people moving around. It is one or two cars. It is uh, The traffic, though, has really dropped off. Uh, the, and being this is the CBD, it is uh, more than likely, well, the, hopefully, it's people making that final move to safety. So it is just the odd car now. We're mainly seeing police, fire and rescue vehicles now. They're uh, doing their patrols. While they still can, um, we're, we're expecting that they will get their personnel to safety within the next few hours as well. OK, thanks for now. Paul Caddick reporting from Townsville. It's frightening, isn't it? Thanks, Rod. Yeah. Well, stay with us on and we'll continue our coverage of Cyclone Yassi after this break. Thanks, Michael Best at Mission Beach. And now for the latest, we're joined by John Schluter. John, how is Yassi looking? Well, Rod, uh, the only major change we've seen all day today is the increase in the speed, although uh, that happened after lunch up to 35 k's. It's back to about 34 now. Uh, the direction still stays the same, west to southwest towards the coast, although just a short time ago it was going slightly to the west, but it's still mostly west to southwest. Currently situated 220 k's east of Cairns. It's moving around 35 or 34 k's an hour in a west-southwest direction. It's still a Category 5 system. Of course, that means there's winds of at least 280 k's at the centre. It's expected to cross, as we've heard, between Innisfail and Cardwell, probably around 11 o'clock at this stage, with the storm surge expected a few hours before that. Now, with the, uh, the main storm surge, that will probably happen south of Cardwell, and it could stretch an incredible 200 kilometres south to Proserpine. Of course, we've been watching this closely from early today. This is the latest radar, or the radar at least leading up to it. And what happened at about 8 o'clock this morning, the cyclone actually claimed its first victim at Willis Island. Willis Island is the, the, uh, the, the uh, island where the uh, Bureau have all their facilities. But at 8 o'clock, when Yassi was passing over, it, it actually wiped everything out. So it was the last image we got of, uh, of what was happening there. And of course, that then started to move in. We felt the, the winds develop through the afternoon. What's been interesting, though, with, uh, with the development this, of this today, there's Willis Island we're looking at. Now, it's about 450 k's off the coast. But the development through this afternoon, you know, we were expecting the winds to come up a lot quicker than they have. I've been watching it right through the day. The biggest uh, gale I saw, or the, the wind gust I saw through the afternoon, was about 1 o'clock, 70 uh, k's at, uh, at Cairns. And after that, it's only been about 40 or 50. But that is now starting to really ramp up, as we've heard. And as this gets closer, you know, 220 k's, it's obviously going to increase from there. 